So we're going to start off with Victoria N. in mm -hmm. Ann Arbor. And she is talking about foreclosures from the foreclosure days in uh -huh. 2009. So from the wow. foreclosure days of yore, we're going back here with Victoria. So uh -huh. she says, I have a certified forensic audit of a foreclosure that occurred in 2009. I had it done in 2015. According to the audit, it seems that there was some unusual behavior by my bank when they did the foreclosure. I think I want to bring a lawsuit against my bank. I have another home now, but the home they attempted to foreclose on had significant equity. What do you think? So from the sounds of this question, wow, that is was, a lo they're always Victoria, loaded questions. Yeah. Was Victoria's home in this question <clears throat> in 2009? It was her residence that was right. foreclosed on. Okay. Right. Sounds like it. You know, I have, <laughs> I um, we have three law clerks at my office and several paralegals and they, they assemble these questions. And sometimes I think that they just like to, you know, they're, especially the law clerks, they're in law school. And so every question is like, uh, is a loaded question because they're great for law school essays, uh -huh. right? Because you can write on them forever. And I tell them, find me the shorter, you know, the shorter answers or the right. questions that require a shorter answer. Um, it's a loaded question again, but here's, there's a couple things. First, in general, Veronica or Victoria? Victoria. Oh, Victoria. Okay. So first thing, just generally speaking, when somebody loses a home to foreclosure and the home goes to sheriff sale, the time to defend or to dispute that foreclosure is between the day that you lose it to sheriff sale, that means it's gone to sheriff sale, and the last day of redemption. Yeah. So in Michigan, you have a six month period, with certain exceptions, you have a six month period to redeem the property, okay? That means to get your property back. So if it goes to share sale, you, you get a figure of, as to what you need to pay the bank back in full and you can get that property back. Now, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a federal court of appeals, has said that if you as a homeowner are disenfranchised from your home because of a foreclosure, you can only challenge the foreclosure process or the procedures during that time, okay, okay, you can't go beyond the redemption period. So in your in your redemption period, you can file a, a, a an action against the uh, the bank, but you the day after the redemption expires, you don't have anything. You don't have any further standing, is what we call it, because the mortgage has actually been extinguished. So the okay. court's reason that if there's no more mortgage, it's been extinguished. That means you can't bring anything. There's nothing there to talk about anymore. So she had six months to bring her case. And it's from the day that it went to sale, okay? Share of sale to the last day of redemption. Now, some homes and some properties have a year redemption. There are certain exceptions for those. And we can get into those later. But long and short of it is, you would have a year if you had the exception. She says that she got, I, again, here we are with this like huge law school type essay, mm -hmm. but she says that she got a forensic audit, she called it. Okay. You know what, you know, it, there's a legal word for the, these. It said certified forensic audit, she calls it. Sure, that's what she says, yep. So what that is, is that somebody, you know, usually the homeowner or an accountant will say, yeah, what happened here with this foreclosure? And an audit is just somebody looking to see if the process was followed properly, okay? Most companies are, that do these, they're out of Florida or California. <clears throat> they're somewhat suspect to say, cert there's no such thing as a certified audit. Okay. Okay, that's number one. It's a bunch of hooey, okay? I know that that's a legal term. But <laughs> yeah. there are, there. it does serve a purpose, though. There's, some, there's a couple I know. There's one guy out of Florida who does a really nice job. Usually, they're not attorneys. They're title companies. And they just trace back what the assignment is and uh -huh. how things are held. That's all it is. I hope they didn't pay a lot for it. Um, you know, I'd like to, oh, here's one more thing. Uh, she said that she had the audit done in 2015. 15, yep. Okay, so I already talked about the redemption period expiring. 
right? Back in 2009 or 2010. Yep. And it's now 2020. Uh, yes. Unless there is something that nobody would have seen before, like a fraudulent item. Uh, fraud cases, you have six years to bring an action. But the question is not, was there fraud? It's when should you have found out there was fraud? Sure. So a reasonable person, the argument would be, okay, let's say there's fraud there. Let's say the bank did something wrong. When should the action be brought? It's not six year, within six years from 2015. It's really six years from 2009. Right. Yep. So she's Doesn't waiting. Make 11, sense? It's 11 years later. Yeah. yeah there's nothing here. I, right. I, mean, I feel so badly for this lady, but she was sold a bill of goods probably from the financial auditor, the foreclosure audit. All you mm -hmm. have to do, people who are listening, if you want to, if you have a question about whether or not there was a, a fair foreclosure or something was done properly, go to a real estate attorney who deals right. with foreclosures, a default loan servicing company, yep. uh, you know, a law firm. Like myself, we do these, we, you know, we review them, um, you know, so, and, and these firms cannot provide legal advice. So her, her question seems to be surrounding the fact that the home they attempted to foreclose on had significant right. equity. Right. What, what is the significance of that in this? Like, why I would that she, be? I think what she's trying to say, I mean, I'm glad that you bring that up. She's trying mm -hmm. to say that she was defrauded. I, I, look, at, I'm not saying that she's, you know, making any misstatements. It was sure. her home, so we have to be very empathetic. It's just that it, there was a lot of equity there. So I think she's trying to allude to the fact that perhaps the bank was trying to get the property back because there was so much equity. But right. here's the thing. I lived through 2009 in, in the real estate business as an attorney uh, in the default loan servicing departments for several banks. And there wasn't a lot of equity out there for people. Right. So I don't think that was the motivator, although, you know, you'd have to, then it's more than forensic. You'd have to go back to that year and then get an appraisal and see how much she actually owed on the property. Yes. It's yep. a lot. There's, these are loaded questions. I got to talk to the law clerks and say, hey, you guys got to, you know, pare it back a little bit. But yeah, but, but, you know, in general, the time to bring an action is during that six month redemption period. Mm -hmm. That's it. And then the time to bring an action because you think you were defrauded is within a six year period when a reasonable person would have found possible fraud. Yeah. 2015 is way too late. Unless it's something completely, uh, it was hidden so well. Yeah, yeah, but it just makes me wonder, you know, yeah, equity of the home when in 2009 or in 2015, there's a huge, Oh, huge yeah. difference there and it's not right. even just the reasonable amount of equity that would accrue in six years it's like it, it's a, you know exponential just because of the markets at that time so that's okay. right good insight very good all right